will let you tell a story. I'm almost reluctant to try this again. I'm just saying that. I probably can talk louder. Okay. I probably can talk louder. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share with you what God has done for me and what he prepared for me. Amen. You know, God has a plan for our lives. How many times we heard the pastor say that to us? But he knows. He knew when I was born that I'd be here today speaking to you and he it, the Holy Spirit is giving me the words that I'm going to share with you today. I did have quite an experience. Uh, first I want to tell you really quickly that Larry and I came to Grove in 2008. We've been together or known each other since we were 15 years old, which was not that we were married, I don't mean that, but we <laughs> went to high school together, and that was just a few years ago. We have two children, we have a son who saves lives, and we have a daughter who molds them. So we have a doctor and we have a teacher. We have five, we've just been blessed with five wonderful grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. And the Lord has blessed our house because our whole family is saved. I was raised in a Baptist church, a Southern Baptist church, so you'll probably hear some of that coming through, okay? But what I want to tell you about is that when we moved here, I found a group of ladies called the Uptown Girls. And I want to share with you how God prepared me to get to this place. Well, we are just a group of ladies, and it was founded because, you know, a lot, a lot of people come to Grove to retire, and they don't know very many people, and the ladies got loads of what have you. So anyway, we get together, and we don't really do anything good. We just laugh <laughs> and carry on and eat and have a lot of fun. And the people <coughs> welcome, and if you'd be interested, because we play games, we do all kinds of fun things. Uh, Lee and Ivy are uptown girls as well, and Pat. And if you're interested, talk to one of them about it, and they'll get you some info about it. Anyway, here's the story. Here's where we begin. We were at the, I like to say City Hall, because that really, to me, you can tell which one I'm talking about, or I can anyway. Anyway, and I, we were playing games that day, and for some reason, I don't know why, I don't remember why, but I went out into the hall. And here was this lovely young woman, uh, about my age. <laughs> 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 anyway, and she was looking at the bulletin board, and she had recently come to Grove. And she was, a, well, she was a divorcee, and she was alone. And she was looking for things to do. So I said, boy, do I have a deal for you. Come on in this room. And that was probably, I don't know, what, three or four years ago, maybe, whatever. Okay, so time went on, and, you know, I just didn't feel right. I just, something was wrong, but we didn't know what. And they diagnosed me with having diabetes, too. Having, I never can say it right, fibromyalgia. I call it fibro because I can't ever say it. There were days that I couldn't even get out of my bed. I hurt so bad. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't get my breath, and I got, I would be so tired. And two of my other friends and I went to Branson. And if, the, you know, this is a real God deal when he prepared us because 
We went to Branson, and when we got back, my friend kept saying to me, man, there's something wrong with my leg. There's just something wrong with my leg, and I, it hurts. And I looked at it, and I said, well, Debbie, I think you have a blood clot. Mm. And so, she, sure enough, when she lives in Oklahoma City, and when she got back, she did have a blood clot. And it was our son who diagnosed it and saved her life. Then I, I don't know, it just wasn't right. I just didn't feel right. I didn't feel right. And I went to, um, oh gosh, at that time, what was, what was that first doctor's name? The heart doctor, not Chapman, but Calico. Do, you know Dr. Calico, anybody? Mm -hmm. Well, if you know Dr. Calico, you know his personality. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't scare me, okay? He did scare a lot of people. But I just walked in there and I told that old boy, listen, before you begin, I know I'm fat, and I don't want you to get on to me because I can look in the mirror and tell it. And from that day forward, we were just had a great relationship. But long story short, I had my first heart cath and had a stiffy. Well, oh, I felt so much better, y'all. You just couldn't believe how much better I felt. And then time went on, time went on, and I started feeling really bad again. And I got so weak I could hardly breathe. I'm, and I would, it would hurt me to talk. It just exhausted me. Now, can you imagine? <laughs> can you truly imagine what it would be like for me not to be able to talk? Serious. Anyway, quit laughing, Larry. Anyway, <laughs> I um, was blessed with a wonderful doctor, Dr. Calico, and he fixed me up and on we went. Well, then I started feeling bad again. Well, and so by then, Dr. Chapman is here. Y'all know Dr. Chapman? Yes. Oh, wonderful man. Wonderful man. Wonderful doctor. We're just so blessed to have him. Anyway, I started having this pressure, like an elephant. I couldn't breathe. I would get sick to my stomach. And because I had these other two things, I never knew. What, what, what is it? Which one is it? Well, finally, we found out I needed to have another stent. So, over to the heart cath lab we went and in went the stent. Well, but I never felt any better. I just didn't feel any better. And it just kept getting worse. And I tell them, you guys, there's something wrong here. There's really something wrong because I feel the same. Well, sure enough, I had to have another stent. And then, it still I didn't feel any better. I didn't feel any better. And then, I had to have another stent. And they, they were hiding. They hit to the point that I had a total of five more stents. But, and I know a lot of people have a lot of stents, more than that. And I'm not going to bore you with the aches and the pains, but what happened was, I ended up having two, behind my heart, two blockages, one was 100%. And none of the doctors wanted to, to take care of those because it was very high risk. And so they sent me up to Hillcrest where they're all together in a group. And none of those doctors wanted to touch me. Can you imagine that? They, none of them, except for this one who was a specialist. And they, he, he was at a conference. So I had to wait, come home and wait another week and go see him. And he said, I believe I can fix you, but I want you to know you got a 50% chance of coming out of it. So I just said, and it's true, well, he fixed me because I don't want to live my life like this. This is not my personality. I need you to fix me. And I believe that he would. So we went back in two days and it was quite different there because it's bigger, it's colder. By now, you know, everybody knows what I look like completely at Grove Hospital. And everybody, I mean, they know my story and I know theirs. And, you know, they're just wonderful, wonderful people over there in that 
heart department and they just give you such wonderful care. Anyway, I'm up there, guys. Now, remember, God knows what's going to happen to me. He just hasn't shared it with me yet. And I'm laying on that table and I'm thinking, okay, I never was afraid. I never was afraid. Not one nanosecond was I afraid because I knew that I knew that I knew that I was either going to wake up and Larry was going to be there and my daughter was there that day with us and stuff. And or else I was going to wake up and see Jesus and my mom. Now, is that not a win-win situation? No. But I've got to tell you this. It's not me, Sharon Anderson, up here like, oh, whoopee, look at me. I had this experience. I'm just a sinner saved by grace, and I'm going to tell you I'm really good at that, too. That's sin, just like everybody, just like you. I'm not one bit different. It might be worse even. But I try hard, and I, ever since I was a child, I had these things that I picked up, which God was preparing me for all of this. One was that I could picture, and I still do this, and I and think about this when you're not feeling well. If you can just picture Jesus and you touching the hem of his garment, knowing if you do that, you're going to be healed. There's no if, there's no and, there's no but. You are going to be healed. And do not be afraid. Because you don't have any room for fear because God is taken over. And I laid on that table and I truly did. I wasn't afraid, guys. And I said, you know, God, I give it all to you that I'm yours. Whatever you have for me, I'm, I'm with it. You know, I'm with you. So anyway, look, I got better and came home. And I hadn't been out on the lake all summer. And I really want to go on the lake. And so these girls, the uptown girls, called me and said, we're going, we're going to go on the boat. We'll be able to get you in 30 minutes. So I was so excited and I just felt so blessed. And, but the girl that owned the boat said, you have to give me a note from your doctor before you can get on my boat because I don't want you having a heart attack on my boat. By the way, the day before, I just like to say preacher, came up to me at church and he said, well, you really look great. You really look good. Okay? This was the day before. So we're going to this girl's house, and all of a sudden, y'all, man, I started feeling bad. And I thought, what am I going to do? I have to give her a note? I can't, <laughs> I can't ruin everybody's good time. What am I going to do? And she had a deck, and you had to walk up on the deck to get into her house. And the minute I started walking up on that deck, pop, I knew something was wrong. And I just kept thinking, what am I going to do? I can't tell these girls that I don't feel well. Finally, I had to tell them because it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. So anyway, I had a couple of nitro and I took those and they didn't help. And we that were talking and they said, okay, let's get on the boat. We need to get on the boat. So we were coming down, back down those steps and I got really sick to my stomach and I said, I have to go behind this tree. I'm going to be sick. Well, when I came out from behind the tree, being sick, I knew I could not get on that boat. And I knew there was something really wrong because I had never, ever, in all the blood uh, clots or whatever, the blockages, guys, I had never felt like that. And so I said to one of the ladies, you're just going to have to get me to the ER. You're just going to have to. So they kind of talked around a little bit, and we got in the car. Now, mind you, this girl, that's it's a beautiful new car, and all I can think about is 
I oh, can't be sick in her car. <laughs> and so I had this big old town because we were going to go on the boat. I had it up to, <laughs> up to my mouth, just, you know, trying not to throw up. And for me, that's, I'm a throw upper, so that was pretty hard. <laughs> and so anyway, we get about two houses down, and one of the ladies' phones rings, and, and the ladies answered it, and they said, you forgot your keys. Well, what did they do, guys? They turn around and they go back and they get the keys. And then, they're just chatting away and I'm back here just thinking, oh, you know. I really never thought I was having a heart attack. I, never, I wasn't afraid, I wasn't, but I didn't think. Okay, I just kept thinking, what now, Lord? What do, who, who, what do you have for me now? So anyway, um, I finally said, well, we got to go, girls. So then when they could, really could understand that I was really, really sick, well, here's where God's plan comes in. Because you know whose car I was in, don't you? The young woman like me who was in the hall at City Hall. And she was driving it, and I don't know if any of y'all know Pat Evans, and some of you probably do. Two of the finest prayer warriors you could ever have. Well, it was no accident that I was in the car with those two girls. So here we go. On the, never knew my mind of any of us to call an ambulance. Anyway, so they're praying. I mean, they're just really good prayer warriors. It was wonderful. And I'm back here this with this towel, and I'm going, I'm not having a heart attack because I'm trying to keep them calm. And finally, it just kept hurting. It was awful, and I didn't, I just didn't know what was happening. So I called Sean, that's our son, and I said, son, you need to call Dr. Chapman, and you need to call the ER and tell him I'm on my way because I'm really hurting. He didn't question me. He just, he just knew. He didn't. They all knew, but I didn't know. Anyway, long story short, what happened to me was I threw a clock. In, guess what? Behind, in the, behind the heart, had the doctor in Tulsa not gone in there and cleaned that out, Dr. Chapman would not have been able to go in there and clean that clot out. It caused me to have a heart attack. But because the girls were, and we got there so fast, I'm, it probably was all 15 minutes. Probably I've talked longer than it took me. Anyway, so they got me all fixed up. And here I am today to tell you two things, okay? First of all, don't laugh at me. Please don't laugh at me. It, it's, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. You just have 